Hi, today we're going to go over how perfectionism impacts our relationships. Last week we really defined what perfectionism was and how it shows up individually, but today we're going to really do a deep dive in how perfectionism impacts the way that we relate to others, well, it's, whether it's a romantic partner or friend or family member. So to start from the top, we're going to go over five ways perfectionism damages relationships. So we may find ourselves wanting to project expectations on others. So I remember when I was in high school, I really expected everyone to be studying just as hard as I was. And if you didn't study just as hard as I was, what, what, was, what were you doing? Like, why were you even bothering if you didn't push as hard and strive as hard as I did or I thought that people needed to in order to be successful? In relationships, it may be you find yourself idealizing like what um, your partner should and should not be doing. Those shoulds and should nots really don't have places when you talk about your behaviors or even somebody else's. In DBT, we even consider that like a swear word in order to move away from speaking in shoulds and should nots. So in per relationships, romantic or otherwise, you may project this sense of like, well, you need to think this way, you need to like do these things in order to be like the perfect person. And if you find yourself projecting this idea of perfectionism, it really goes into this precursor of blame. You blame yourself, you blame your partner for not meeting these expectations, which then causes resentment, disappointment, and overall, tension. A person may find you controlling if you project perfectionism onto them as well in a relationship and that you also will probably find that that person will be highly resistant to anything that you suggest if you are constantly in this position of like trying to push them to do things that maybe they don't want to do and this causes a lot of like emotional turmoil in a relationship. Another thing that perfectionists may find themselves doing in relationships is framing conflict as a failure. So they may find themselves highly avoidant of conflict. They may pepper every conversation they have with, I'm sorry. They may desperately look for other people to constantly be apologizing for missteps. However, the truth is conflict is healthy. So if we are always avoiding conflict, we may be finding ourselves in a relationship that's like codependent. And in the next video, I'm gonna go over a lot about codependency and perfectionism and how they're linked, um, but that's for our, our next video. So you may find in relationships that have a lot of perfectionism tied to it is that one partner may find themselves wanting to like dig their heels in and um, be stubborn and resist any suggestions like I mentioned. Um, it may impact the way that they view disagreements. Um, if you disagree, somehow the relationship failed. Somehow the relationship's not exactly the way that it's supposed to be. If you don't come up with a, a resolution and you agree to disagree, that is even seen as more uncomfortable for someone that feels like everything needs to be something that they value or view the same way. Uh, another thing that happens in relationships that have perfectionism is a misunderstanding of what the honeymoon period is. And a honeymoon period in relationships, usually there's a lot of joy and laughter and you find yourself more and more attracted to wanting to be that person's friend or wanting to be that person's romantic partner. Um, maybe you have a bunch of hobbies that both of you are doing together, but as time goes on, both in romantic and in friendships, you may, you may find that people become more independent and want to do more independent activities. And someone who sees perfectionism as an ideal may find that that's very uncomfortable. They feel like their partner's pulling away. They feel like 
their partner no longer as is as interested in them as they once were. The next one is buying into the concept of a perfect relationship. I know we've all seen like romantic comedies or you know someone on Facebook or Instagram having this really perfect relationship. But you have to remember like those are the, the highlight reels. Like all of that is just one side of what the relationship looks like. No relationship is perfect, whether it be a friendship or a romantic relationship. And the final one is communication. Um, oftentimes you may see communication needing to go perfect, right? You're always talking, you're always exploring, but sometimes relationships um, get a little stagnant and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a, about needing to reinvest in a time like that. Um, and again, this is another like idealized version of how they see the relationship. Um, no communication is perfect. You can always move closer and closer to healthy communication, but there may be times when you find yourself like stepping back from wanting to approach something that seems like something that should be discussed, or you may find yourself ignoring or minimizing an issue and then find yourself angry at yourself for, for doing that. And again, like you can't show up every day perfect in relationship and neither can your partner or neither can your friend or whatever like everyone only has so many resources available to them whether that's time whether that's mental energy like it's just important to again let go of some of these things that we see as what a perfect relationship looks like okay so i'm gonna move on to what are some things to remember and, and learn from what I've kind of just gone over and how to move away from perfectionism in a relationship? So number one is uh, learn the difference between doing the best that you can and perfectionism. So doing the best you can is showing up each day with all the resources that you have and be the best version of yourself. That doesn't mean the perfect version of yourself. There's no definition of what, like the perfect wife, perfect husband, perfect sister, perfect best friend, perfect brother, you know, dad, mom, whatever relationship that you have with someone, there's no way to define what the perfect version of that is. So if you can just show up every day in the relationship, doing the best that you can, that's all that anyone can ask. And that's all that you can really expect of yourself. Another thing is learning when to reach out. You know, sometimes people who um, have conflict avoid reaching out to others because they're afraid that other people will see how their life isn't like picture perfect. And oftentimes when someone experienced a lot of perfectionism, they may want to isolate and avoid communication with people outside of the relationship. However, that creates like this storm of shame um, and storm of feelings of inadequacy and not being good enough by not sharing your story or not sharing your struggles with others. Uh, another thing to try to avoid is a lot of social media. You know, sometimes social media, again, paints that perfect picture. Movies paint a perfect picture of what love, of what friendship looks like that's not going to be the, the story that you see every day in your own life. Like your narrative is your narrative and trying to compare it to another narrative is not really going to lead you to any sort of happiness or any sort of like sense of self content. So if you can, if you can move towards limiting some social media in your life, you may find yourself less stressed and less, motivated to move towards perfectionism. Another thing that might be helpful if there's perfectionism in your life or in your relationships is learn how to fail. You know, maybe you try to have a conversation that you've been afraid of having and it doesn't go well and you figure out how to tolerate that, right? Like you use some emotion regulation skills or you go to therapy or you learn how to use coping skills when something doesn't go excellent 
right? Or doesn't go exactly the way that you want. Um, maybe you pick up a hobby that's like brand new to you and you know it's gonna be a struggle and you figure out like how to do that hobby slowly, right? You might fail or not be the best at it in the beginning, but if you continue to work on it, you'll again, build a skin or build a mindset that allows you to, to fail without the world coming to an end. Another thing is to remember the big picture. Um, sometimes if we get too like narrowly focused on like one thing, we find ourselves being like, oh, this didn't go well. Like, I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. But if you're like zoom out the lens and see all the other things that you maybe have done in that day, in that month, in that year that have gone well, you may be able to really see that you're not a failure or your relationship isn't like failing and let go of some of those like perfectionistic ideas you have about every single moment, every single interaction needing to be perfect. Another thing is figuring out how to delegate. You as an individual in a relationship cannot do everything in order for the relationship to appear like perfect on the outside. So learning to trust that your friend or that your partner or whoever will like pick up part of the relationship, right? Like you, by being perfect in the relationship, you're kind of letting the other person like a little bit off the hook. And that's not really what a relationship is. Like both people need to be invested. So, you know, don't go behind your friend's back or your, you know, husband's back and do something over that they did. Um, don't do all the work in a group project. Like learn to let go and trust that they will follow through with what they said they were going to do. So those are all of the things that um, can help someone move away from perfectionism in relationships. And I hope that you learned something today. Uh, remember this list isn't like all encompassing. I'm sure there's other ways that people show up in relationships um, that impact them trying to be perfect or different ways that you can try to heal from being perfect. But I just wanted to give people like a jumping off point to dive deeper in their individual therapy or in their own introspection. So next time, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we'll talk about codependency and perfectionism. And yeah, I hope everything was helpful today and I will pick up with everyone next week.